we should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who will that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race. Grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard a voice from heaven speak to me. Then the voice spoke to me and said, Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went up to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. He said to me, Take and swallow it will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will taste as sweet as honey. I took the small scroll from the angel's hand and swallowed it. In my mouth it was like sweet honey, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then someone said to me, you must prophesy again about the many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. The word of the Lord. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees, I rejoice as much as in all riches. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to the mouth. Your decrees are my inheritance forever, the joy of my heart they are. I grasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. According to Luke. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My, father, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people Meanwhile, we're seeking to put him to death, 
but they couldn't find no way to accomplish their purpose because all the people were hanging on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. In yesterday's Gospel last night, we had Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. It says, as he drew near Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. He wept. There are a couple of times in Scripture we see Jesus weeping. In the Garden of Olives, the night before he is to die, as he's taking upon himself the sins of the world. When his friend Lazarus dies and he goes to raise him from the dead, he weeps. And here he stands on the hill looking down upon Jerusalem, the holy city, and he is weeping. He is weeping for them because they did not recognize the time of their visitation. All the thousands of years the Lord had been speaking through the prophets in various ways through foreshadowings and prefigurements, announcing his coming, that he will save them and deliver them from sin, and he finally arrives and they didn't recognize him. Some did, but the leaders, the Pharisees, the high priests, they didn't recognize the time of their visitation. The hearts, as much as they thought they loved God, their hearts had actually turned from God in their scrupulosity of trying to live the faith the Pharisees could not understand the mercy of God, that God had come to deliver them. Now with the power of the might of a King David and by the sword, but he would come in humility and simplicity, come with incredible charity to heal his people of their sins to deliver them from the bondage of sin, not with the power of the sword and not with the spear or the shield or the power of a might of a force of an army, but in the greatest of humility. Indeed, he would take upon the weapons of war to destroy sin and death and the evil one, but those weapons would not be weapons as was thought of of old. It would not be a sword in his hand by which he will deliver his people but it would be by nails. He would not ride on a great horse coming into battle, but a ride on a donkey that would lead him to Calvary, to Jerusalem and then to Calvary. And the throne upon which he would sit would not be a throne of glory of gold, but the the throne of the wood of the cross. Not to the royal singing of the praises of the people, but to the rejection of humanity who would cry out, crucify him. He would win the battle not through the power of the strength of victory of crushing those beneath him, but would win the power of the victory by allowing himself to be crushed in humility, by bearing in himself the sins of the people, taking upon himself the guilt of his people, offering himself in sacrifice for them and delivering himself into the hands of the wicked. Through humility, through intensity of love, the Lord would win the victory for us in the power of the cross. Not with a royal robe of purple, but purpled with the bruises of the beatings he would take for love of us. As prophesied by Isaiah, he was scourged for our transgressions, wounded for our iniquities, like a lamb led to the slaughter, but not his mouth, like the sheep before the shearer. Yet it was our sufferings he endured, our guilt that he bore. And we thought of him as one smitten, stricken by God. And God was pleased to crush him in infirmity. For if he gives his life for the ransom of his people, he shall see a long life. How beautiful Isaiah prophesied that the victory over sin and death would not come through a great king riding upon a powerful horse, sword in hand, crowned with a royal crown of gold, but would come mounted on the wood of the cross with nails through his hands and a crown of thorns upon his head, purpled in his own bruises and clubbered in the red of his own blood, offering himself in sacrifice. The great victory was won over sin and death by the greatest act of love humanity ever known, the act of the love of God who so chose to humble himself to become one of us and as one of us to take upon the sins of the world and to offer himself to the Father for our salvation. 
That's how the victory was won. In humility, in poverty, in simplicity, and with the intensity of divine love and the gifting of himself as an eternal sacrifice to the Father. An eternal sacrifice. A one-time act that would perpetuate itself through time and history. Every time the holy sacrifice of the Mass is offered, Calvary is renewed, the Son is offered to the Father, the perpetual sacrifice continues as the Son continues to offer himself in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's why as Catholics we don't have ministers, we have priests. Priests offer sacrifice. It is the one priesthood of Jesus Christ that every priest shares in and every priest offers a sacrifice and the sacrifice he offers is the same sacrifice that Christ offered on the cross, the same sacrifice of the Son to the Father. And so Christ Jesus, the high priest, offered himself on the hill of Calvary to the Father as high priest offering the sacrifice of himself so at every Mass, every Catholic priest who shares in the one priesthood of Jesus Christ offers the same sacrifice, Jesus Christ to the Father. Same priest, same sacrifice, same offering, same humble, powerful, simple God who so humbly offers himself under the veil of bread. Although it is not bread at the moment of consecration, it becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ who offered himself on the cross at Calvary, the same Jesus Christ who rose from the dead, the same Jesus Christ who preached the Sermon on the Mount, the same Jesus Christ who ascended to the right hand of the Father, is truly, really, substantially present in the Holy Eucharist, offering himself to the Father and in turn, offering himself to us in the gifting of himself to us in Holy Communion. The same humble God who comes to us in simplicity and humility to impart to us the grace of the victory. What is the grace of the victory of the cross? Our salvation, our redemption, our intimate union with God, the possibility of sharing in divine intimacy a gift we now share in the communion with him, in Holy Communion, the gift of the Holy Eucharist. This morning we read in the Gospels of our Lord entering into the Holy Temple, and he clears it out, gets rid of all the animals of sacrifice, drives out the ox that were being sold for sacrifice, drives out the pigeons that were being used in sacrifice, drives out the lambs being used in sacrifice. All things Israel was ordered to do by God in the desert for Moses. God now comes and clears them all out. No more need for sacrifice of animals. It's kind of like their day of liberation. They no longer have to bear <laughs> the sufferings for what man does and being offered for our sins. He drives them all out and cleanses the temple because the lamb who takes away the sins of the world has come to be sacrificed. The lamb prophesied by Abraham when he said to Isaac, God will provide the lamb. The lamb has arrived to offer himself in sacrifice for us and so he cleanses the temple as he comes into the temple. He will become the sacrifice, sacrificial lamb who will take away the sins of the world. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, I, I'm kind of rambling here, huh? <laughs> as I'm running through all of this, as it's coming just out of my heart, the beautiful love I have for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is so humble and so good and so kind and so generous and so charitable to us, that he should come to us in such a humble, unique and beautiful way to offer himself not just simply upon the Calvary, but to perpetuate that gift of himself, that sacrifice throughout time and history, that I would get to share in his priesthood and offer the sacrifice, that you would have the grace to be here at the foot of Calvary as Christ offers himself to the Father in this perpetual gift. Let's clear our hearts, invite the Lord into the heart, 
to come in with that whip of his and to drive out anything in our heart that doesn't belong and allow him to reign over our hearts as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that his cross may truly be branded upon our hearts, that we may always live our lives loving our humble God who loves us unto death. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, of all our sins through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you placed the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holy. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up.
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Remember today at three o'clock, those wish to come, we have Eucharistic Adoration with Divine Mercy, chaplets of the holy hour of power for the, for the protection of life and the end of abortion at three o'clock. So it'll be adoration with the Divine Mercy Chapel, Benedict, close with benediction. And then say a prayer tonight. We have our young adult meeting tonight at uh, uh, 6.30. So we're gonna have a little potluck dinner. And after that, we're gonna have a, um, uh, some adoration time with our young adults, some prayer time before the Blessed Sacrament with them as well, a little talk and then some discussion. So we're developing our young adult ministry, which is 18 to 35, trying to catch that age group and help them truly develop in the faith. Next week, we have our youth group, first youth group, so God willing, that goes well, and they're gonna get some Eucharistic adoration as well. <laughs> so my goal is to get them all to fall in love with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, his true and real abiding presence. So uh, keep that in prayer, and uh, who knows, maybe someday we'll be able to have perpetual adoration. Wouldn't that be nice? So we'll see what happens. God's God wills all things. Um, and continue to pray for our country during these difficult times. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of fear going on right now, and fear is never of God. God is not a God of fear. Always remember when you feel fear, what, Je what Jesus said to Jairus when he was going to raise his daughter from the dead. He said, fear is useless. What is needed is trust. Fear is useless. What is needed is trust. That's a beautiful phrase of our Lord to keep in mind, especially during these days where we're all so afraid. You know, what is needed is trust. God's got it. Or as I like to say, I read the end of the book, he wins. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the weakness and snares of the devil. May God with you can we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.